I tell you stories about losing shit. Yeah, fucking, I'm drinking up David Lee Roth's face right now. <laughs> I remember stealing that record when I was like about 13 years old. I had no idea who the band was. I just saw the record cover and I went, okay, I'm gonna steal this fucking record. But yeah, I, I, we went to the Walmart and I bought a, uh, a pair of pants. And uh, within 24 hours, within 24 hours, the fucking pants were gone. And I'm out on the street in my fucking boxer shorts just walking around like, okay, trying to remember and trying to recollect about what happened in that 24 hour period. <laughs> What's that, dick cheese? What the fuck is that, you know? What is that? Is it pasteurized? <laughs> What's your name? You want the real one? Yeah. Well, my, my board name is Kendall, but uh, you can call me Ken. And my family and my bandmates call me Kenny. What's your punk rock name? Uh, Mr. Chai Pig. Where did you start, start skating? Uh, dude, I think I was about... Uh, 10 years old at the, uh, at the boys club in Edmonton. Yeah, the boys club in Edmonton. What did you do in the winters there? <laughs> Sniff glue and, and, and bumper ride. I'm a goofy foot. Uh, I remember what, me and my brother used to steal shit to get money. And uh, we'd order stuff from Val Surf, a skateboard company in California. And uh, we couldn't wait to get that box. And I remember one of the first ones was, uh, um, met a guy that had a Logan Earthski. Never seen one before in my life. So I got one of those and then I went to a GNS, uh, the Stacy Peralta, the original wooden one, like, kind of like that one there. And, and then the laminate came out, so I had the number one and the number two. We had it all. And then I remember getting uh, tracker trucks and uh, <coughs> road rider fours. We had a skateboard team. We got sponsored, and uh, which meant we got free gear. So we, we didn't have to steal anymore. Uh, stealing became, at that time, a recreational activity, <laughs> just to amuse ourselves. Where and when did you meet? I met him in Regina when, uh, because that's where he's from, and uh, I just happened to be there. And uh, he already had a shop by then. But at that time, uh, the original name of the company is GNC, Great North Country, and then he took that off. But that's the first time I met him, and... Uh, where was the first ramp you skated? Uh, well, we used to make our own. You know, like renegade bullshit. Like, uh, you know, you didn't have the privilege like skaters have now. I, I, I consider modern day skateboarders really privileged to have something like this and spoiled. Outdoor skate parks, unheard of. We take a, a, a plank of fucking wood, you know, a four by eight, put it up against a garbage can. That was our ramp for the day. And we'd scout out places that had slopes. You know, and if you call me a slope head, I'm gonna throw this can in your face. Cause that's just fucking racism. <laughs> Did you skate much around then? Um, well, I skated, um, you know, that, that big bowl out in North Van where PD had one of his shops. Yeah, yeah, that one, yes, yes, yeah. Yeah, and China Creek and yeah, and, um, uh, yeah, and other places. Yeah, whenever, whenever I could, whenever it wasn't raining. Edmonton was really hard to skateboard in because uh, uh, it snows six months of the fucking year. So every Sunday we'd go to this parkade and there was no cars there and it was smooth as hell. 
and then fucking you'd go, we'd start at the fifth level, go all the way down, catch the elevator, go up and do it all again every Sunday. But then skateboarding was a totally different animal. We did everything, downhilling. We knew all the trails in the summertime and then uh, hit the parkades in the wintertime. But then we do freestyling, like tricks. and We learned every fucking trick in the fucking book. Now people are like just limited to like one thing. Not with us. Our minds were open and very expansive. And uh, I remember uh, stealing a bunch of uh, lumber supplies and building my own ramp when I was uh, 14 years old. Yeah. Were the other guys from the original SNFU into skating? Belkies? Well, that's how I met the, the Belkey brothers. They, okay, we were on a team called uh, Skiers. It was a ski shop. Um, but they, uh, the guy had a vision, and he had this fucking ramp, like right beside the shop. And it was uh, 12 feet wide, 16 feet high, with four feet of vertical. It was fucking awesome, dude. And that's how we learned there. And so he asked us, he saw me and my little brother, me and my little brother found out about this place. So we went there and skated, and he was really impressed with the, our skills. Said, I want to start, start a team. Do you have any friends who skateboard? I said, I'll name them. And uh, yeah, so we had that team. And on the south side was another place called Del, Del Mars. And it was the Dell's skate team. And those were the ones that weren't good enough to get on the skiers team and that was the Belkies, and we beat them every fucking time. We'd walk, we'd go in the contest, me and my little brother, with our skateboards tucked under our arms, our precious skateboards, and uh, <laughs> they'd fear us. They're like, oh my fucking God, the Chin Brothers are here, and we're gonna lose. And sure enough, if it wasn't my little brother who takes second, I take first or go back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. Every goddamn time. Did you ever come see shows at the Smiling Buddha? Uh, no, that was uh, before time. The first time I was here was 1980, but I didn't make it here. Um, I think it was still open at that time. Um, I, I, I was staying in a house with Mad Dog. Yeah, of all people to wind up with. Yeah, we came, we came to Vancouver to see uh, The Undertones. Someone told us you made a short film about skateboarding in Stanley Park? Um, no. It was about sucking cock in Stanley Park. It wasn't about skateboarding at all. They are two totally different things, man. Yeah. <laughs> when are you guys going to play SBC? <laughs> Whenever we can, I think, uh, you know, uh, we're doing something in the new year, and uh, when those guys get back here, if I choose one place, it'd be here. Anyone you want to thank? Any, anything well, you know to what? Say? Well, PD is one of them. Uh, you and Andrew. Um, anybody that like had the frame of mind and took the time and care to support SNFU in whatever way, like coming to the shows, like the, the people I've met over music. And, um, you know, we, we, had a, we had a vision that, that okay, we're gonna, we're gonna play hard music, like fast for people that live fast and people that don't mind hurting themselves. And that music was designed and constructed specifically for skateboarders, renegade spirits. And I knew that things were gonna happen. Like, I saw the tattoos coming, I saw the dreadlocks coming, I saw the alternative culture coming. I'm like, I'm just gonna go for it. And it's, swing with it and build a soundtrack to that. And you know what? I think it kind of worked. 
<laughs> Maybe, I don't know. How does skateboarding and punk rock go hand in hand? It's the, it's the independence of it all, it's the do-it-yourself kind of credo, and the aggression of it, and the speed of it, and just like, everyone else can fuck off. I'm gonna get on my skateboard and ride, far away from you. And you ride away from your problems, whatever's happening at the family, and fuck you guys. Like, me and my little brother are getting on our skateboards and we're gonna give her shit. And, and then you're lost in this world that no one else knows. And it's just like, you're free. You know, you're freestyling and, and you're you. And the only one that can control that, can control that board is yourself, right? And sure, you're gonna wipe out, you're gonna make a fucking mistake, you're gonna eat shit. And you get up and do it again. And then trying to correct yourself the next day. It's like, okay. And I'll tell you, speed wobbles really suck. I remember one time doing speed wobbles down the hill. Oh, panicking, panicking, panicking. Uh, the pants weren't invented yet, and I was shitting my pants and uh, hit the lawn and caught air and just like, my face was green and I looked like the fucking creature of the Black Lagoon. I was like, holy fuck, that was, that was awesome. That was rad. I think I would climb up the hill and do it one more time. <laughs> what do you think about what we're doing down here? I think it's awesome. It, I, I mean, you guys are community-minded. You did this all yourselves. And uh, you support local talent. You know, you sell local artists' art and, and their records and their music. You let them play here. This is like a little safe haven, I think, you know. And uh, I'm drinking a beer right here and I can smoke inside. And that's very rare. You can do that in Japan, you can do that in Europe. But it's far and few between you find some place in Vancouver where you can do that in a, in a public environment. Okay, I'm gonna, sh I'm gonna do the can. If I was to come anywhere, like if there was one place, it'd be here. I remember being here, like uh, we were up here, well this is like modern day, I wasn't here in the old day, but uh, it was, a, we were walking from the Metropole, and we were walking right down the alley. Um, Andrew, you and I, Five o'clock in the morning, you guys fumbling for the keys to get through the back door, and then we uh, we had a couple beers, and uh, we were smoking cigarettes, listening to music, and Andrew, you guys are sleeping in here, and Andrew was like right there in his sleeping bag, and all I saw was a head, and it looked like an animal or something, and. And he smokes a doobie, and as, as soon as he put it out, he just totally bonked out. And then uh, uh, I finished up the beer, and then uh, you walked me home. We got pulled over by the cops. Yeah, that was funny, yeah. In the back alley, you're in a gold suit. Yeah, that, yeah. Well, that gold suit got me into a lot of trouble, that thing. Like, how can you not <laughs> miss? Some fucking guy in a Wookiee hat in a gold suit. Yeah. yeah. You know, I just want to thank you for being around and still being here. Being well, you know what? Uh, you know, I just turned 53, but I like uh, to hang around with youthful young energy and positivity, and I find that in you guys. And that's why I come by, just to say hello. I don't always have to, to drink. I like to drink. But that's not why I come by here. Well, you know what? It is still full of the memories, but now we have the experience and the chance to check out something that we missed out on. And you guys bought it back. And look at all these pictures here. And you can just feel it. Because 
every, everything else pretty much, you know, it's corporate bullshit. And I don't feel it when I come in here. And I can walk in here knowing goddamn well that I'm going to run into somebody I know and just like be casual. Have a beer, have a cigarette, and a conversation. If I can get that one conversation every day, an intelligent one, I walk away happy. You know, and then that's how you get to know somebody. You get to hear their stories, and you go down to like a bar, people are miserable, and you hear the sob stories. And it's just like, this ain't fun, you know? This you can be you. And there's people doing things, creating art, you know, blown off some steam by fucking skating on that ramp right there, listening to good music. Is there anything wrong with that? The answer is fuck no. Go to the other places, there's rules and regulations. And yeah, I don't want to hear that fucking same old story, that, that same unfunny joke, you know? Speaking of unfunny jokes, I want to say hi to Peter Dukeman. I know his real name, and he hates it. Okay, there's those Bazooka Joe uh, bubblegum. Do you remember that? Okay, well, what was the name of the character, the guy with the ball cap? Charger? Pud. And I'm the only one that gets away with calling him Pud without getting without getting punched in the face. Because I've known him for so long, and he fucking hates it. So if you want to piss him off, call him Pud. And if you want to piss him off, when he tells a joke, beat him to the punchline, and he gets so mad. But I do it anyways to see if I can get away with it. And I'm only as God made me, motherfucker. If you can't accept that, you can eat my fuck, motherfucker. Lick my shit, fucking fucker. Okay? This was the first one. We recorded this record in 10 days <coughs> in Los Angeles. And that's us years ago. I didn't see it. Malcolm. Can you spell it again? M A L. Yeah, I always get it wrong. C O L M. Yeah. Hey, if you ever see this fucking faggot on the street, let me fucking know, man. Because this guy owes me $20. <laughs> when I find him, I'm going to. Fuck that guy. I'll give, you, I'll give him the gurning. You want to see the gurning? I'm the Canadian punk rock gurning champion. Watch this, Malcolm. Yeah, I got it. <laughs> Woo!